，早安，早安，大家好。今天<笑>要揭晓一下我们最新的报告。Everybody awake? Okay, I will do this in English. I'm here to talk about the most hyped category of traveler in the world, and that's for good reason. China's outbound travelers represent huge potential in traffic and spend. Now that more than just a sliver of them have the opportunity to go abroad, they're making up for lost time. Chinese travelers took 120 million outbound leisure trips in 2015. To date, not much has been known about how they shop for travel, where they go, what their future plans are. So, Focusrite recently conducted a first-of-its-kind study, surveying more than 3,000 of them on all those topics. One of the biggest things we found, as expected, lots of money is being spent—205.7 billion dollars in 2015. It's an impressive figure, but it's even more impressive. When you consider all of the ways that the deck has been stacked against Chinese travelers going abroad, recent policy changes that made it easier to get visas to countries like the U.S., U.K., Japan, Israel, Egypt, have only recently begun to take effect, and already we're at 120 million trips and two, almost 206 billion dollars spent. So, what makes them different? Well, first of all, where they book. I'm sure you all know that China is home to some really strong brands when it comes to online travel. We knew that they were dominant when it came to the domestic bookings. Our research confirms they're also le leading when it comes to travel abroad. Sea Trip and Chunar way out front. Tunio, Ly.com, and Ali Trip trying to catch up. What you won't see here, and you wouldn't see unless we had at least. 15 brands on this list is anything under Expedia or the Priceline Group. They're way behind at single-digit percentage rates. The course of Chinese outbound travel is being set by the young. More than half of travelers aged 25 through 44 took outbound trips in 2015, compared to just 37 percent of those 45 and over. And whereas in other markets, travelers 45, 50, and older represent the most spend, in China, those younger travelers are already earning at levels comparable to the older generation. So these young outbound Chinese travelers, what they do, where they go, how they shop, how they share, what they talk about, is going to. Really set the course for Chinese outbound travel, and also for online and mobile travel globally. In some ways, they're already leading. In some ways, they're still catching up. It's no secret that China's mobile travel market is huge. The first majority, first majority mobile online travel market. Additionally, young travelers, travelers globally are leading the shift to mobile. So it's not surprising you see really heavy usage of mobile for booking. It is striking, though, just how far that goes. We found that for outbound travel, mobile was the preferred booking platform for car rental, long-distance rail activities, hotels, packages, every single travel segment except for air. And there's a huge generation gap. The youngest travelers are booking via mobile at. Nearly four times the rate that the oldest travelers are. So as those young travelers gain in wealth, gain in travel experience, the post 80s, post 90s generations are going to really accelerate this already world-leading mobile usage rate. Along with that heavy usage of mobile, comes an embracing of so-called alternative payments. Alternative payments. Are a bit of a misnomer at this point in Asia Pacific, where in markets in markets where credit cards never saturated e-commerce are turning turning to alternatives that better fit、uh, better fit the mobile era. But in China, the last two years, this has really really taken off.、Uh, mobile mobile payment methods like Alipay and TenPay, WeChat Wallet 
are ubiquitous, used for buying groceries, paying utility bills, booking taxis, and increasingly, they're also used for big ticket, low frequency purchases, such as travel. We found that when it comes to outbound travel, Alipay and WeChat Wallet and Tempay were the second most widely used payment methods after credit cards. And again, big generation gap. The youngest travelers, 60% purchased outbound travel products using those payment platforms in 2015. The older travelers, less than a quarter, which would probably already make them uh, one of the highest in the world. They're not accepted everywhere. Uh, Airbnb is a notable exception, but for the most part, travel retailers based outside of China do not accept these payment methods. So for those travelers who prefer to use them, that's just one more reason to stick with a local OTA. So Chinese, young Chinese outbound travelers are at the forefront of some major trends, but there's also some ways they're still playing catch up. One is just basic experience, another is independent travel. Group tours, still a big part of how Chinese travel overseas. Two out of three outbound travelers chose an escorted group for their last trip. But they're not so different from travelers elsewhere. And they're beginning to notice that something might be lacking. A more spontaneous experience is what people crave. And we, we see young travelers leading this shift to, to independent travel. Uh, wealthier travelers, travelers in first tier cities, also much more likely to, to take independent trips, but travelers 18 to 24 were the most likely to travel independently. With less FIT travel, it's also not surprising that the sharing economy has been a little slower to catch on. Airbnb has really only pursued the Chinese market over the last two, year or two in a serious way. Prior to that, there have been a few other peer-to-peer -peer lodging companies that launched domestically, none of which ever truly caught on. I've heard it said that Chinese travelers won't do this, that they are not into sharing their home with a stranger, and that they, don't, they will not travel that way, it just won't work. But again, if we look to the youngest travelers to see where things might be headed, we see that they're catching up with tra travelers elsewhere and staying in rented homes or apartments or rented rooms at a much higher rate than the oldest travelers. So, the Chinese outbound travel boom is not a monolith. Trends vary by age, by wealth, by geography, but patterns are definitely emerging. That insane mobile adoption, complete comfort using mobile, mobile wallets to pay, and, and, a, and a willingness to embrace new modes of travel. I want to remind you those numbers that we started off with, 120 million trips, 205.7 billion dollars. These are the travelers who are defining the future of travel. And we're keeping a close eye on them. And you're going to need to too, because understanding China's outbound travelers is not just about serving them, it's also about understanding the future of mobile travel globally. Thank you.